Hello, welcome back. So it's time for another upgrade project. And this time I have two machines that are identical and they've been sitting on the sidelines for a while while I've been accumulating all the parts and pieces I needed and basically the free time to do this. So it's going to be the CR10 S5 or S500. Uh, essentially it's a bed slinger, but it's 500 millimeters by 500 millimeters by 500 millimeters. Um, very popular machine. Some people love them, some people hate them. So I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the machine and th this video is gonna be an overview of what I hope to do to this machine, all the upgrades. Uh, and then I'm gonna break uh, those upgrades into individual videos, like the hot end, the electronics uh, and such. So we'll break it down that way. So we'll keep the video short and concise. This way, if other people are doing these kind of upgrades, they can click on exactly what they need. Are you ready? Here we go. Hey, welcome back. So first of all, let's start off with an introduction. My name is Paul, and this is my channel where nerdy is cool. I'm big into 3D printing, tutorials, filament, you know, accessories, all that stuff. Uh, I like to share my knowledge and help you guys learn how to 3D print a little smarter and safer. So that said, let's talk about the current project. So this time around, this is the CR10 S5. It's also called the S500. Um, if you haven't seen these, I suspect you have if you're watching this video, but uh, let's go to my other monitor here. And uh, this is what it looks like um, on the product page. Uh, unfortunately, mine is black with a black background, so a little hard to see. Um, but uh, these, um, I wanna say when they were brand new, they were selling for close to a grand, uh, especially if you bought them from uh, uh, other vendors, uh, I know there were tiny machines and others that would upgrade them for you, put AC beds on them, uh, different uh, extruders and such like that. So this is what the Amazon listing uh, looks like from the Creality store. I believe you can still get these, uh, of course, you know, it's a clone, so uh, you could probably get them from other, uh, I think Comstock was one of them as well too, that you could get them. But again, you know, this is what it is, it's a big bed slinger. And uh, I do have the uh, Creality listing over here, which is just as vague as well. Um, although they give you some information. Now what's interesting here is when the printer first came out, I think it came out in 2017, 18, it's been a while. And uh, they have since added, you know, the BL Touch Pro because uh, with a very big bed, uh, these things were notoriously difficult to level. Um, you know, you get that big, heavy glass bed, you really can't go really fast because you're moving all that mass. Um, so this was just one of those 3D printers that um, supersizing it could sometimes result in frustration. But uh, yeah, so here it is. At last I can see here it was selling for $6.99 and I see that I cannot add it to my cart. So they are gone. Um, again, this is an older design and I think they've since replaced this with uh, uh, other machines, the CR10 Max and others. But they, I haven't seen any of the Creality's uh, get to this size uh, since then. So... I have two of these. Um, both of them are used, and uh, let me put my camera on the uh, particular printer we're working on. Uh, this one uh, came with the, uh, uh, this is the Bontech DDS. Uh, this is what I have on several of my printers. Um, it has the uh, E3D uh, V6 hot end in here. Uh, they've got, you know, this is the fans. Um, I got, I've already taken this off of the uh, uh, extruder mount. And uh, I'm going to be doing uh, something uh, completely different with that, which I'll talk about here shortly. But I just want to show you what I have here. This machine, uh, the glass has been removed, and uh, I already have a wham-bam sheet on here. And uh, this is a, uh, everything feels like it moves around pretty well. Uh, it does have dual lead screws, so that's great. So both sides, you know, go up and down. It would be kind of sad if only one lead screw worked, because you could really have some issues here. Uh, this particular one also, um, this one has, the previous owner has removed the uh, SSR, uh, was sitting on the frame, and the preferred method of keeping these guys cool and happy is to put them on a, an appropriate heat sink. And this also has a fan to keep that heat sink nice and cool. I got the uh, wiring here, I gotta run for that. Um, so there is that. Okay, so some of the first things I'm gonna be doing is working on the structural stuff of the 3D printer. Uh, some of the things I've seen other people do as far as upgrades that have worked well for them. So first of all, uh, this is the uh, uh, gantry. Uh, I'm sorry, this is for the uh, Z-Brace. 
uh, Z-axis support rod is what these guys are, officially from Creality. And what these are going to do is uh, they're going to attach to the back and then to the top. Um, I think I can't even get the top of the printer and the camera angle, but this is going to stiffen that Z-axis because right now this, you know, I mean, it feels pretty darn, you know, steady to me, but why not, right? This is what they recommend, so why not? Uh, another thing, this is what I received uh, from Tiny Machines. Um, this is the uh, uh, belt synchronizer. So basically on the top of each lead screw, these um, pulleys will be there, uh, held in place with the belt. So there's less chance of the gantry going out of skew if both of the uh, lead screws are mechanically connected. So that's another piece. Um, this right here, uh, it's just a, you know, uh, it's a key reel, uh, but I found that these things are just wonderful for having on top of the 3D printer. And you loop this down to the wiring harness that you have and it keeps things out of the way. And with a printer this big, um, dealing with all the uh, springs and such in there is not a whole lot of fun. And it was recommended by uh, several people to go with solid spacers. So that's what I have here. Um, so currently in there are, let's got to take a peek here. There are some little springs in there. So those will be coming out and these solid spacers uh, will be taking over. The bed surface, we don't have to do anything with. The previous owner has uh, already upgraded this to a, a Wham Bam a PEX. Uh, the magnet is attached directly to the heated bed, which is an AC bed. And uh, hopefully by keeping things, you know, uh, nice and thin and light uh, and then, you know, level with these guys uh, will make for good quality prints. All right, pardon the mess. Uh, this is the electronics box for the uh, CR10. Um, it's all a 12 volt system. I believe this is a stock board. I don't even know how old this board is. I'd have to look it up again, but uh, she's an old girl. <clears throat> so first thing that's gonna go is uh, this 12 volt power supply is going to go. Um, the reason why is uh, we're gonna go 24 volt and 24 volt is going to open up the ability to use our Slice Mosquito hot end, our Bontec DDX uh, setup. We'll get to that here shortly. Um, but anyway, let's stick to the electronics box. Yeah, there's wires everywhere. So yeah, good time. Um, new boards going in and uh, in place, we're getting an SKR3. And uh, what this has is it has uh, X, Y, Z, Z, uh, E, and E1. And essentially, um, since we have two lead screws, uh, I wanna control them independently to use some of the features in Marlin for some advanced leveling. So uh, one of them will be connected to the Z motor and the other one will be controlled by E1, because uh, E0 is a hot end. And that will, uh, we'll, we'll toggle that in the firmware so that we can do that. So, there is that. We also got uh, these uh, nifty looking uh, drivers here. Let me pop that up and show you. Uh, these are the vertical guys, 2209s. Um, saw them on sale, thought, hey, they look a little different. Let's try that out. Now inside the control box, there's a lot of modifications for the CR10 control box. And for the SKR, uh, there's a lot of options to choose from. Now I'm gonna wind up having to carve this box open a little bit because where the USB and the uh, SD card um, plugins are, I do not obviously align to where the stock board is now. So one of the designs I found on Thingiverse, uh, this is uh, what we're gonna be using as the new mount. Uh, so it has the holes from the existing pattern that's in there. And then our board's gonna attach here. Now I found a couple of different designs and the thing I like about this one is that um, the placement of the cooling fan is directly where the drivers are going to be. Some of the designs I saw, uh, the fan was, you know, over to the bottom or the side, but this design uh, really went through and uh, pointed out that, hey, the thing I made different here was so that it definitely blows uh, cool air uh, on top of the drivers. Now, because we're doing a 24 volt system, uh, we had to make sure we got 24 volt fans, so we're good there. And also, uh, on the back part, the exhaust port of the uh, control box has a rather noisy fan, so I found a nice quiet one uh, that's also 24 volts. So, the control box, with any luck, <laughs> will be efficient and a bit quieter. Okay, the last part of the parts pile is the hot end. So, as I referred to uh, in the control box, we're going to be using the Bontec DDX, and this is a uh, I've used this on many machines. Um, this is a really great setup. And then I have the Slice Engineering, uh, the Mosquito Hot End, and uh, I've got the full kit here. 
and uh, have a lot of experience with these. So this is gonna work really great on this machine. Uh, also have a couple of the Gamma Master nozzles, a machine for this size. It's probably gonna be using you know, 0.8 or higher uh, nozzles, but, but anyway, um, the fun part about the DDX is making sure you get all the right parts and pieces you need uh, for everything. Now, this is an upgrade kit to the CR10S. And one of the things I had to make sure that I did correctly was I had to make sure that the fans <laughs> that come with it, um, it's, the kit is assuming you're gonna be reusing the stock fans. Well, the stock fans are 24 volt, I'm sorry, 12 volt, and we need 24. Uh, so I was able to uh, look up those fan models and find replacements. Um, and then I had to make sure I had all the proper accessories uh, for, for example, the BL touch and stuff like that. So that's all the parts there. Um, for fans, you know, you can really get lost on Amazon and other sites where the quality is a little iffy. Uh, I found that KB3D was a really great source uh, for a lot of these fans, uh, as well as tiny machines. Um, whenever I can, I'm trying to use local uh, or small businesses instead of Amazon. So if you're trying to find some uh, quality stuff, uh, it's really nice to be able to uh, email them directly and say, you know, hey, is this fan really quiet or is it, <laughs> is it landfill? So that's the hot end pile right here. That's the pile of stuff. So this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna work on step-by-step -step <laughs> getting this printer upgraded and make it reliable and get some great prints out of it. I hope, I hope, I hope. Uh, there's a few other things in the background. I also bought from 3D Upfitters, their large uh, 3D uh, printer enclosure that fits this machine. It was a very expensive purchase, so I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing how that all goes together. Because uh, certainly, um, I do want to make sure that I'm controlling the environment I'm printing in, so I want an enclosure, I want to filter and vent outside all the off-gassing and nasties that 3D printing generates, and I also want to control that environment inside, uh, because if you enclose the printer and control the environment, better prints. That's it for this time. Do check out what I'm doing on social media. I'm on Instagram, I'm on X, of course if you're here on YouTube, and also the website where nerdyscool.com. So thanks for watching. Please, please, please remember to print safe and see you next time.